Hey everybody, welcome once again to uh, another video here of showing, showcasing some of the cool fun things that Foundry VTT can do for your D&D 5e game or whatever else you're playing. Tonight, as you saw my subtitle there, we're going to be showing a little bit of integration with D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond is a really cool third-party site that lets you generate characters, you can get content, the whole nine yards. I use it quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But uh, tying that with a browser based uh, VTT like Foundry makes it super, super fun. And we're going to show a little bit of the integration, what you need to do. First of all, is if you're the GM, you're running the game, you probably want to install the Beyond 20 companion module. You can search for this within your VTT. Um, add-on modules and just follow the information there you can go to the project URL uh, which will take you out here to um, Kakaroto's website right here and then with a lot of information of how to get it running for players you want to let your players know about the Chrome or Firefox browser extensions that they will need once you have it installed you'll see it up here it'll look just like that the little red uh, B dice there once you're in, you log in, you know, if you're a player or even as a GM running the game from your browser window. Now, granted, if you're running the game from a standalone application, you can't push the roles and information from D&D Beyond. So you got to do it with a browser window open. So, again, being a, a Node.js app, running it out of your browser like Roll20, a lot of you are probably familiar with it. Fairly easy to do. So once you have that up and running, you create your actor in this case so I'm going to show from a character perspective here's here's my actor I call him the mishmash that's the same name as my character on D&D Beyond it's a level 4 100% randomly generated character so as a wood elf sorcerer uh, not the best stats I just hit random I wanted to be level 4 boom here you go just for some testing and once you have it integrated and running you want to click it and make sure that it activates Chrome. There are some security things that you have to kind of prompt sometimes for it to work. You can probably leave most of the options as they are. I have not changed it, but sometimes if you want to be able to change some features that are generally across the board, you can click on the more options. It'll bring up a pop-up, how you do critical hit rules, tiebreakers to initiative role, um, adding initiative to turn tracker, which you probably want to do, auto roll, types of roll, advantage, disadvantage, ask every time, which is, you know, depending, roll 20 has always double roll, right? Always, always that. So we'll, we'll, we'll change it to that just to show you guys what it looks like. It says saved, we're okay. So now we're in our game. We've got our character here. They're wandering around. Maybe they're sneaking up on some goblins here. We're going to, we'll, we'll zoom in here a little bit. Uh, show you guys as it's zoomed in there uh, what they might be doing what they might not be doing and so now you're like hey we've got combat let's let's get things going so let's add these two uh, to the combat tracker as a GM you can do that highlight all of them and immediately they're right there on my combat tracker so here as I'm going to run the initiative for the NPCs so I can either click the roll NPCs button up here or individually so we're gonna do individually that one got a that one got a 10 you can see right here he rolls for initiative he got a 10 so you as a character within D within foundry you can roll it right here you know it, it'll take based on the information on your character sheet which right now his uh, dexterity is a 10 so I'll show you what it looks like so if I roll it well we'll hold that here in a minute so what I'll do is go in DD beyond and they say roll for initiative you just click this button and you'll see this pop-up over here which will show initiative some information you click on beyond 20 you hear that dice ring in the background go to chat and because I'm rolling always two rolls we'll take the one on the on the left he got a wonderful four if you notice it automatically updated here within the system the combat tracker now granted you could also let's let's go ahead and clear this encounter out we'll do it again we'll add these guys to the combat tracker 
Don't do that. But let's say you're as a player, you just roll it directly from in here or on the DM. Sometimes players are having issues. You can always roll it for them. And granted, this one has notice no initiative bonus because it's pulling from his local character sheet, which right now it's a zero because it's a 10 dexterity. Whereas my D and D Beyond, it's pulling a plus two because it took that information from D and D Beyond. So right off the top, you can see it's uh, got some cool features there. Let's do it again. Repetition is always the best way to learn things, right? So the goblin has rolled his initiative. We'll go back here. We're going to roll initiative once again and much better. So we got to, oh, it helps to actually highlight your token. If you're not, if you're the player, your token's not highlighted or whatever, it's not going to work. So let's, uh, let's try that again. We'll uh, add that and boom, their initiative 13. Oh, well, he could have gone. For, uh, he is going first because he has a 13 over the other one. So now the now we'll go ahead and begin combat. It's a test turn or whoever my my test character is, right? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to look and say, Ooh, what am I going to hit them with? Uh, maybe I have a question. Let me ask the, the the DM. Hey, how does chill touch work? You can say display in VTT, and now everybody, either the DM can do it if the DM has access to that character sheet. So DMs, one way to see your characters from your players is create a campaign, right? And add, have everybody join up. That way, if they have questions, you can easily go right into the, their character sheet and kind of view things. If they're having issues with rolling uh, dice, you could actually roll it for themselves within that campaign. It can be a lifesaver if they have questions. But then here you go, chill touch, right straight imported from D&D Beyond. You can either click it here, which will actually roll it, right? Show it from here, or if you're in here, it shows the same information. Let's go ahead and cast that on the VTT as obviously as the DM. Whoa, we got a critical. So now we've got that there. So we're going to roll damages. And then now these are, again, another module that I have. Now I can apply damage to whichever creature that person was targeting to. If somebody says, hey, I need a, you know, a wisdom. We'll do a uh, we'll do a wisdom uh, throw here or something to that effect, or maybe we need to do a wisdom saving throw or roll passive perception. You can can do that same oops, same thing here. Where did I go? Oh, here we go. Actually, that's not showing up for some reason. Oh, you know why? Because I probably don't have my character. That or I'm just not doing it right. And sometimes that happens. Oh, here we go. So, you know, we got Constitution. You could throw it there. Constitution saving throw. And you can kind of see what it looks like from that aspect of it. Again, a really good way, even casting spells, which we just did. So actions, if you want to do a crossbow, you can display the information, which will push it right across here. Then you can go ahead and cast it as well. If you have advantage or disadvantage, pick your option, you know, and moving forward. So a really cool way to show that integration. You also will see this button here on D&D Beyond if you have it up and running. Again, if you want to change out, I don't, I do not want to roll twice all the time. Let's just do normal rolls. And now we're going to roll, let's say, a, a dagger attack this time. You see, I've only got one roll coming across. Hit that drop down arrow. See a little bit of the information of that uh, of that attack and everything like that. There we go. So again, it's a it's a simple plug-in module. But if you're kind of moving to a digital world or you're leveraging uh, a lot of content on D&D Beyond. From a, from a GM perspective, it's really nice. You can kind of see like monsters. So let's say for instance, I want to see a goblin. So uh, let's do here. Oh yeah, right here, view page. So I've got a goblin or if you have an adventure and you want to see now some of the stuff here is for another module we'll talk about some other time. But for now, let's say I'm in a goblin and I need to roll maybe a, a stealth check for this, for this goblin. And I'll get a pop-up here, normal advantage. We'll roll it normal. 
the goblin rolls an eight. Same thing if the goblin's going to attack. I can just click within here and then it'll populate across here. Now granted, I could do the exact same thing here as well within uh, Foundry VTT. I can hit this as well and kind of get the same information. Some of the uh, information is coming across just differently. How Dean DB on kind of pushes it across versus clicking natively within the application itself and character sheet. You can kind of see here, I have a module that has double roles turned on. So clicking it locally shows something a little bit different, but because I have it from my plugin up here as only single, it's only showing one. I'll do an, a normal attack, kind of the traditional way. And then I can roll damage as well and then roll those separately. So even from a DM perspective, being able to uh, show some information about uh, creatures into, you know, that are out there, uh, just a, a fun way to help kind of manage so you're not flipping stuff. Now, obviously, if you have a character compendium with, you know, imported creatures and things like that or whatever, it's going to have the same information managing it might be a lot easier just doing it from uh, uh, Foundry VTT itself. But again, this is just the the D, &D Beyond uh, plugin. Works really well, super fun to play with, especially if you're uh, running characters, campaigns, just doing some testing, you've got a lot of content on D, &D Beyond and you're like, how do I get it over here? This is a you know a way to kind of integrate some of the roles and some of that information coming across. There is a another module called VTTA in D and D Beyond that lets you actually import data to Foundry. We'll talk about that maybe in another video because that that's definitely worth its own video just how it works uh, along that line. But again, a lot of people have heard D and D Beyond, especially if you're. In fact, I believe if you're using Roll20, you can actually use this in conjunction. The developer has built this extension and has it working on both platforms. But most recently, he's been pretty heavily focused on the Foundry uh, VTT. So whether or not he'll continue the other stuff, we don't know. But anyways, hopefully uh, that was a little bit informative for you guys. A little bit different there. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a note. I have some links in the chat. We'll talk to you later. Have a good night.